G'day everyone. Today I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about the Naval Designer in Hearts Wine 4. I'm going to teach you how to edit and create new designs. I'm going to teach you what stats are important. I'll teach you where all the research techs are that you need. And I'll also give you some suggested designs and templates at the end. And I'll also throw in a sneaky little trick at the end. So stay tuned for that. Jumping straight into it to view your naval menu, click on the production tab, and then you can see you've got this little icon here with the anchor to create a new production line for a ship design you already have, or you actually have the option to create a new ship design from this here as well. You can see the designs which have the blue, sort of like the, the bluish background. They are existing designs that you can uh, create a production line for immediately. The grayed out ones are for a ship hull, which doesn't yet have the modules that it needs to be considered a design for you to produce. So much in the same way that tanks and aircraft need a chassis to be based off for you to put all the other modules on, a ship needs a hull, which you can then add modules to. Let me show you. If you click on this little blue button here to create a variant, it will pop up the ship designer for you. It looks aesthetically pretty much the same as the tank and aircraft designers and works much the same way as well. At the very least for a ship design, you need to have a engine, and a primary gun. Now, along the bottom row, you have a variety of different modules that you can equip. The first one being what kind of gun that you're gonna have equipped. The second one is a slot for anti-aircraft, which is gonna increase your AA stat. That affects directly any planes that are trying to attack, the, attack this ship. You also can equip either a fire control system, which adds a bonus to different modules. For example, your guns and AA or you can add sonar, which is gonna help you detect submarines and engage them. In this slot, you can also add sonar here. You can only add one at a time, but you can add sonar in this slot if you have the fire, uh, the fire control in the other slot. Or you can also add in radar, which gives your ship more ability to detect and engage enemy surface fleets. Again, you've got the engine slot here. This slot is for secondary weapons. So that's things like your secondary batteries or for destroyers, you can add in torpedo tubes. Uh, and this final slot on the bottom row is for your armor, which is basically gonna give your ship more defense, uh, make it less likely to be sunk when it's in a battle. On the top row slots, there are different restrictions placed on them depending on uh, where they are on the ship. So you can see when we hover over the tooltip, this is a rear slot, meaning there are only certain modules which can be placed here. For the middle slots, you can place pretty much anything on here. For example, if we open up, we have all of these options, whereas on the rear slot, we're missing, I believe the torpedo tubes, yeah. There's also a forward slot for some ship designs, specifically the 1936 onwards. If we open up this one here, you can see that there's a front a front uh, slot here, which can place even less. The You have a bit of variety you can place here. You do need to be mindful. For example, if you're wanting to put a light battery on here, you're better off putting it in this front slot. Then you have these other slots free for different modules. If you look on the right side of the ship designer, you can see all the different stats as well as the effective changes by uh, the different things that you're gonna equip onto your ship. If we go through the stats now, uh, starting from the left-hand column, you've got your speed and range. Range is pretty self-explanatory. It's how far your ships are gonna be able to reach from your nearest base. Uh, if you're in the F2 menu, for your naval menu or like sorry for the naval view and you select a task force you can see the like sort of red hashed i uh, i don't know what the word the blocked off zones uh they're out of range for this task force from wherever they are uh, from whichever port is nearest to them so you can see particularly in the pacific there's a lot of areas that we actually wouldn't be able to affect naval supremacy in the regions that we have part supremacy the regions that we have part coverage we can get a reduced amount of naval supremacy in. So yeah, your range is gonna influence that. The speed is not only how likely your ship is to be able to catch an enemy fleet once they spot them before they escape, but also your speed gives a chance for your ship to avoid enemy fire. Speed is actually quite an important stat for your ships, whereas for the tanks, especially speed isn't as important. Um, it is for planes, but yeah, not to the level it is for, for the Navy. Much the same as any other sort of unit in Hearts of Iron, organization is how ready your ship is to engage in a battle and also how long it's gonna last in a battle. So high org is also good to have. You can upgrade that throughout your doctrines as well though. So early in the game, it's gonna be a little bit lower. Um, so just be mindful of that. HP is how much damage your ship can take before it's destroyed. So obviously high HP ships are gonna last longer in a battle. Reliability works the same, uh, pretty much the same as it does with your tanks. So again, it's sort of 
how likely your ship is to be damaged if it's exercising or just moving around or uh, how likely your ship is to be sunk once it is engaged in a battle as well. So in terms of these stats, the speed is probably the most important as well as your organization and HP. So really keep an eye on those ones. Uh, supply and manpower, don't need to worry too much about those. Although manpower does affect how much naval projection or how much naval supremacy you're able to affect in a region with this ship. Uh, with the recent updates to the game, it used to be you could just sub spam and that would work quite effectively. Um, however, submarines do have quite a low manpower, so uh, they're not really going to affect, I guess, as much supremacy as you might with a larger ship that has a higher manpower count. Coming across to the combat stats, you've got your light attack and light piercing and your heavy attack and heavy piercing. If you're familiar with how the naval system works, it's kind of similar in concept to the soft and hard attack of land divisions, uh, except if you imagine your screens are light and your capital ships are heavy. So any light attack that a ship has is only going to affect enemy screens and any heavy attack is only going to affect enemy capital ships. So this cruiser, which only has these light cannons on it, uh, these light guns, this is only going to be able to target enemy screens. If we had a heavy battery on here, which we're actually unable to because you can't mix heavy and light batteries anymore. But if we had a heavy battery on here, theoretically, we would be able to engage both types of ships. And then you have your torpedo attack. These come from your torpedo tubes. They're optional for ships. You also have depth charges, which are how likely your ship is to be able to engage and destroy enemy submarines. So again, like I said, you've got your light attack, which is your screens and your heavy attack, which are your capital ships. You have another class of ship, which is the submarine, which sits below the surface. And you can see on the right hand side, you've got a bunch of different stats in terms of uh, ability to detect enemy submarines. And then your depth charges is how much damage you can do to them. So there's kind of like three classes in the Navy of how that works. So if you've got this ship being designed specifically to spot enemy submarines and engage them, make sure you've got depth charges. And then finally, you've got your armor and AA. So armor is basically your ship's ability to avoid enemy attacks for like whichever class it is. So for example, this ship is a screen. So having 10 armor, an enemy ship is going to need more than 10 light attack or light piercing, sorry, to really do a decent amount of damage to this. So adding armor to your ships, especially the smaller ones, if you're only engaging smaller ships can be a good strategy. But uh, yeah, so basically armor goes up directly against whatever the piercing rating is. And then the attack is how much damage that ship will be able to do to the HP once it's pierced through, if that makes sense. That's a very rough and basic way of explaining it. Anti-air is how much damage you can do to enemy planes that are attacking your ship. So that's either going to be enemy uh, enemy naval bombers or enemy CAS. So having a lot of anti-air defense is really good, uh, especially on your larger ships. And I'm going to show you a little trick for that later in the video. If we jump into the research tab now, you can see there are two tabs for the naval techs. So you have your naval and your naval support. Starting with the naval, this is where you can research both ship hulls as well as different modules that are attached to your ship. So primarily you've got your destroyers, cruisers, battleships, carriers, and submarines. Um, you also have the super heavy battleship hull that you can research here. Certain hulls give you access to different modules as well. If you click on them, it'll show you. Uh, mainly it's the engine type that you're able to add on. And researching submarines also gives you the access to the submarine tubes, the submarine torpedo tubes. You have these techs here, the smoke generators, which is just a flat bonus to your entire fleet. So uh, fleet speed while retreating allows your ships to disengage from battle and run away. That's obviously worth doing. You have your depth charge techs as well, which again, gives you more depth charge attack and more ability to engage and destroy enemy submarines. And then of course the sonar techs too. So definitely worth doing these if you're fighting an enemy which has a lot of submarines. You always start off with a basic airplane catapult tech. However, you can research an upgrade to it, which gives you a lot more surface and sub detection. So worth researching that as well. Finally, different armors. So you can research th the three different levels here. That applies to your different ship classes too. Jumping over to the Naval Support tab, 
This is where you can research both modules to equip on your ships, as well as just upgrades. So going through them, basically the top row is for gunnery. So going up the top, that's your light batteries, then you've got your medium batteries, and then your heavy batteries. So clicking on these, you can see the different bonuses that they give you, as well as any new modules that they unlock as well. You can also research these dual batteries, which are pretty interesting. They give you a smaller amount of light attack and piercing than a normal battery would, but they also give you anti-air. So this can be a good sort of like compromise or a, you know, a nice way to get some extra anti-air attack on your ships. This also applies to secondary batteries, secondary batteries as well. So for your larger ships, it's really worth looking at adding them on. Coming down a little bit further, we have our torpedoes. So this is where you unlock the torpedo modules which go onto your ships, your surface fleet ships, rather than the ones that go on your submarines. Uh, you can also research these upgrades, which they give a bonus to all sorts of torpedoes across the board. So that's increasing their attack, decreasing their reveal chance and increasing the chance of getting a hit. On a side note, if you notice that you can't make uh, naval bombers, for your aircraft, you actually need to research this very first tech. Some of the minor nations don't start with this unlocked, so yeah, just thought I'd throw that out there. Scrolling down a little bit further, you've got both survivability techs, being these three here, which reduces your chance to receive a critical hit, which is going to just murk your ship instantly. And then you also have these techs, which increase the light and heavy attack across the board for your ships. And then, of course, you know about the different transport techs, which you should know from one of my army guides or my naval guide. I can't remember which one I put it in. Um, it does also allow you to research the floating harbors. That's worth keeping in mind. I guess that's technically a naval thing that you can research. And then down the bottom, you've got your mine warfare. So the very first tech gives you the mine rain rails and mine sweepers on your, you can pop them on your destroyers. And then if you go along, that increases your, I guess, effectiveness of your mines. Uh, and then coming along here, you can actually airdrop uh, mines and then air clear mines with your planes as well. If you wanted to do that for some reason, I don't know why, but if you want. And then down the bottom row, that gives you mine, mine laying rails for your submarines. So if you want to be real sneaky and uh, mine the coast of an enemy with your subs, you can make a super cheap submarine just with a mine laying coil and it will do that. Now, there are some technologies not contained in these two tabs, which they give you modules to your ships as well. If we jump over to the artillery tab, the main, or I guess the only thing that you get out of here is the anti-aircraft. So uh, researching the first level of AA is going to give you the access to the level two AA for your ships, and then so on, you've got level three, and then so on, level four. So um, looking at the amount of anti-air that it gives you, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you combine that with some of the bonuses, for example, if we go into the engineering tab and we look at our fire control system, these techs give you a bonus to, yeah, your anti-air, light, uh, light and heavy attack, like hit chances. So yeah, once you combine those together, it can really increase the amount of damage that you're doing quite significantly. Looking at the radio techs as well, you can unlock the radar, which you can equip onto your ships, which gives you more detection, um, both for surface and submarines. And that also increases your anti-air um, as well. So both of, these are, uh, both of these ones here are worth doing, especially if you're really focusing on doing a surface fleet. Alrighty, now I'm gonna show you just some sort of basic designs. Keep in mind, I'm not the expert at this, like in terms of the micro and all the spreadsheets. And if you want all that stuff, go watch 71 Cloak. Uh, These are just some stuff to get you started in sort of your single player games or your casual multiplayer games. Uh, also keep in mind, I have gone through and unlocked literally all the techs. So pretty much just try to use the best, most recently unlocked tech possible, uh, unless I say otherwise. Just based on that as well, don't really be super mindful of the spreadsheet, like the um, stats of each ship. That's going to vary quite a bit. Um, obviously, if you won't have all of the bonuses unlocked immediately, you'll have to research them over time. Uh, and I've also got the ship designer, which increases the range. So that's going to be a little bit skewed too. But it's just a general idea of what to go for with the designs. So starting off, we've got two variations of submarine. The first one is the trusty bathtub. So this is as cheap as humanly possible, 390 production cost, absolutely bugger all. Uh, it's just got a level one engine and a level one torpedo tube. And all you're doing is trying to fill space. Like maybe you're a minor nation with no production. You need to get that slight bit of naval supremacy to naval invade someone like another miner that doesn't have a Navy. 
this will suit you great. Not really good for anything else except for maybe convoy raiding on occasion. I'll pretty much use the cheapest submarine I can until I'm in a position where I can create something like this, which is actually a decent one. So this is the 1940 submarine hull. I've got, uh, that's not meant to be radar. That's meant to be a snorkel. Um, so yeah, that's when you can actually put a snorkel on it, which decreases your sub visibility by quite a lot. Makes them harder, to, harder to detect. Um, I've also got the best submarine tubes filling all the slots I possibly can and a really good engine on it. So, uh, basically the idea here is if you're not going to make the cheapest thing possible, you may as well make the best thing possible. That's kind of the attitude I go with there. And then you've got two different destroyer designs. The first one is for anti-sub warfare. That's what ASW is. So I basically just chucked the best depth charges I can on there. In terms of the other modules, cheapest gun possible. Don't worry about AA. In terms of the sonar, the best one you can get, the best radar you can get, and then the best engine as well. All of these designs are assuming you're at around the 1939, 1940 timeframe. Um, so yeah, basically just something along this line. It's a bit more expensive than a basic uh, destroyer, but it's still going to give you good capability to destroy the enemy submarines, especially if you combine it with something like this, which is a spotting cruiser design. Uh, again, you don't really need any modules on here except for your radar, sonar, and then uh, float planes. And that's going to give you a ridiculous amount of surface detection. It's also going to give you a really good amount of sub detection. Back on the destroyers as well, uh, the meat shield destroyer. So again, basically this is just the cheapest thing possible to use as screens for your main ships, like your carriers and your battleships and your cruisers and whatnot. It's really cheap. It's gonna get sunk anyway. So why waste the production cost in making something expensive that's not gonna do anything? So yeah, basically just pump out as many of these, get that four to one ratio of screens for your capitals and you're good to go. Now, in terms of a light cruiser of something that's gonna engage enemy screens and destroy them. Look, I'm probably going to get ripped to shreds in the comments for this, but what I find works is just something simple. You just give yourself a few of your uh, medium batteries because they have the highest amount of light piercing, which means if the enemy does have any armor on their screens, you're going to be able to break through it. This is the highest level of light armor that you can get on a ship, and that is a level of 12. So this is kind of as close you can get until you're getting into like those sort of real like late stage uh, light batteries, but you don't really have them. So just put the highest level you can on there. Don't worry too much about everything else. Again, you want these to be a bit cheaper. Um, pop your fire control system on there so you've got a higher hit chance and then you're good to go. Now for your battleships, I've kept these designs here. These are the basic designs that you start with. The main thing that you sort of want to do against, mainly against other human players if you're doing multiplayer and they're going to be like naval bombing your ships or even if the AI is naval bombing your ships. The way it works in the game is a naval bomber targets the highest, oh my god I've gone blank, it's either they, they either target the highest production cost or the highest manpower ship in a fleet. I can't remember, but either way it's usually your battleships. So what you want to do is stack as much AA on your battleship as possible. So we've got all of the anti-aircraft, all of these module slots filled with AA guns, the highest level we can get. We've also smacked on the highest level fire control, which gives us another boost, as well as the highest level radar. And then just for good measure, we've put the dual purpose uh, secondary in there. So, and then we've also got the highest armor we can get too. The reasoning behind this is we want all of the enemy planes to be focusing on this battleship and getting shot down. A anti-air rating of 30, I mean, again, don't focus too much on the stats. Basically, most of the time, your AA rating is gonna be higher than what that sh what that plane's uh, air defense is. So if you've noticed that I'm not really putting AA guns on the rest of the ships, that's because all my battleships will be absolutely chock a block with them. And then if you wanna make a super heavy battleship, I've got no clue why you would wanna do this. It costs you twice as much as a normal battleship, which is already ridiculous. Something like this. It still gives you air attack. Uh, it's gonna give you more than enough heavy attack and piercing, as well as a heap of light. Like this thing's basically just gonna mince everything, but I mean, why would you even want it? And then finally, your carriers. So I personally don't put armor on my carriers. Tell me in the comments if you think I'm an idiot, but uh, Basically, the production cost of my carriers, I just make sure that it's less than my battleships. So ideally, they're not being targeted by enemy aircraft. So I still put AA on here just in case, I guess, you know, you still want to have some air defense um, and the radar is sort of to boost that. Um, but I generally just try to put as many hangers on a aircraft carrier as I can. That's why I try to get the naval designer before I build this ship, or at least, you know, you can 
if you get the naval designer you can slightly change one of the modules and then it will like update it on there and you just save it um so yeah but basically i want to have as many planes in the battle as i can because honestly carry is super powerful with having your naval bombers i sort of go for a 70 to 30 60 to 40 ratio of naval bombers to fighters um because yeah just having that naval bomber attack is really powerful now i said i had a little bonus trick at the end here and what I'm going to show you right now is how to refit your battleships to be those anti-air designs that I showed you before, those AA battleships. So if we jump into our naval view here and select our fleet, you can see that just for the battleships, so these early ship hulls, we've got what the Queen Elizabeth class, Revenge, Nelson. We've got quite a few different designs for our early battleships or our early heavy ships. So what we're gonna do, the first thing I want you to do is go into your officer core and get the Naval Refit Yards Spirit of the Academy. This makes it 25% faster to refit ships. And then what you're gonna do is come back in your production queue. What you're gonna do for any of the battleships that you've got classes for, so even go into your outdated ones and recommission them so you can work on them. Any of the battleships you start with at the very beginning of the game, what you're gonna do is create a variant. Uh, we're just gonna add two on the end so we know which class it is and when it's been modified. And then what we're gonna do is without changing the engine, armor, or main gun, we're gonna go through and add the maximum amount of AA that we can. I mean, look, at the start of the game, you're only gonna have AA too, so I'll just pop that on there. Uh, but yeah, basically you wanna go through and put the best AA you possibly can. If you've got the dual purpose batteries, definitely do it. If you've got the fire control, definitely do it. You won't have radar, but I mean, you can always add that on later, but basically you're gonna look at something like this. So you're just filling the ship up with anti-aircraft defense. The enemy planes target the biggest ships in the battle. So that's usually gonna be your battleships. You don't need to put AA on your screens. They're just gonna get sunk anyway and that enemy aircraft aren't even gonna target them. Now what I want you to do is go through every class and do the same thing. It takes a crazy long amount of time to refit a ship when you've got to change like things like the engine and the main gun. Whereas changing these other smaller modules does not take anywhere near as long. So if you're changing just that individual design, it's gonna be the most time effective way of upgrading all this. So now you've gone through and you should have them all sitting up the top here. Now what you wanna to do to refit the ships is come back into your task force where they are all contained and then double click on one of the variants. It's gonna select all of that same class, it's the Queen Elizabeth class. And then you're gonna click on this little button here to refit this little yellow arrow pointing upwards. And then you wanna find the same ship class here. So you can see the different production costs that it would take. Like, for example, if we click on this one, it's gonna take 700 days to refit each individual ship. Some of the designs are similar enough, like for example, the Revenge class. So you could really just do one design for the Revenge class and the Queen Elizabeth II. Basically find the same class, the same upgraded class as what your ships are originally. Click on that and refit them. And then just continue through and do that with uh, all of your different designs. So the Revenge class here, the Nelson class, and then the Renown class. And then finally, we've just got the one Admiral class. So we'll do that. Now, if you jump back into your production tab and scroll all the way down the bottom, you'll see that we now have all this new production for refitting these ships. So once the ship refit has been completed, they'll just automatically rejoin that task force. So what I'd recommend doing is do this at the very start of the game, uh, finish off whatever ships that you wanna build, and then the dockyards will automatically trickle down through all of your battleship refits. And then over time, your fleet will have all of these beautiful, big, juicy AA battleships, which are gonna shoot down all the enemy planes that try to naval bomb you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful and entertaining. If you did, please let me know down below. I'll also have links to my other guides and playlists in the comments and in the description. So feel free to check that out and I will see you guys in the next one. And also stonks.